I'm Kaylee and this is my November wrap up all of the reading that I did in November. Before we dive into all the books that I read in November, I'm going to reach back here to our booktuber shout out book and we're going to shout out somebody randomly. Today's shout out goes to the novel Nomad. I'll leave a link to their channel over in the description, so be sure to go over and subscribe to them. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to this channel and follow me over on Goodreads and Instagram and all the social media places. I read a total of 36 books in November. I read 24 picture books, seven middle grade books, one children's chapter book, one nonfiction, one graphic novel, and two fantasy books. So one of the fantasies that I read was The Book of Night with Moon. This is the first book in the Feline Wizards series, and this is a spinoff series from the Young Wizards series, which starts with So You Want to Be a Wizard. Now, I have really been enjoying the Young Wizards series. I think I'm up to book six now. Still have quite a few left to read in that series, but I thought, aha, why don't we try this spinoff? In this spinoff, we do meet some of the characters from the Young Wizard series, and they feature in this series as just kind of background characters. What surprised me was that this first book in the spinoff contains spoilers for book four of the Young Wizard series. So you really do need to read Young Wizards first, at least up through book four before you try the spinoff. This series also has a lot more adult content than the Young Wizard series, which really surprised me. I, if you're curious about what it was, I talk some more about that aspect of it in my Goodreads review. I'm not gonna go all into it right now, but it was just weird to see. In this style of book, I expected more of like middle grade or teen YA content and not quite so much like, okay, wow, that's for adults. I don't know about this. Aside from that, I just didn't enjoy this book as much as I expected to from how much I've loved the Young Wizard series. The plot was really slow. The storyline is just kind of convoluted and there's some plot holes in there and things that are just left hanging and that are never explained. And then it felt like sometimes the writing was just like overly mysterious about nothing. Then when you find out what the big mystery is, it's like, oh, that, that was it? That's all? I've read other books by Diane Duane and I've come to expect a really nicely, tightly woven plot. And this just wasn't it. It was kind of fun to learn about the wizard cat culture. They have their own language, their own religious beliefs, their own history and social relationships and things. So the world building was good, and interesting, but I didn't really connect with any of the cat characters. I ended up giving this two stars. It just didn't live up to my expectations. The rest of the books in this video are all books that I received from a publisher in exchange for a free and honest review. Another disappointment in November was Dragonfly Eyes. I ended up giving this one one star and I was just so disappointed. This is about a little girl, Ame, who has a very close relationship with her grandmother. Her grandmother is French, but her grandfather is Chinese, and they all live together in 1960s Shanghai. During the Chinese Cultural Revolution, Ame and her grandmother, because they are European, suffer persecution under the communist regime. What drew me to this book is that Ame loves to play the piano. And of course, I'm a pianist, I'm a piano teacher, and so I really loved those aspects of the story. The scenes about the piano are really beautiful and almost lyrically written. The writing style is slow and thoughtful. It really takes the time to appreciate the beauty in art, the beauty in nature. I enjoyed like 90% of the book and I was just swept away in the close affection of this lovely family. And then the ending happened. Happened. No spoilers, but there is a character who decides to commit suicide. And that is tragic and horrifying. But the author treats it like it's something romantic and noble. It actually says that the person chose to leave this life with dignity. And I'm just appalled that this dangerous philosophic viewpoint is being taught in a children's book, in a middle grade book. That's a very dangerous idea to plant in someone's mind that suicide can somehow be dignified or noble when really it's just ugly. The truth is suicide is never the answer no matter what the circumstances may be. And I'm very disappointed in this book for this really dangerous 
philosophic idea. It's just horrible. And it's a shame because the rest of the book was really lovely. Just the ending was really, really tragic. I also read The Tilter Smith. Four friends are very concerned that winter does not seem to be ending. They begin to suspect that there might be magical forces at work that are holding back the spring. A mysterious green man gives them magical objects and a quest to find the lady. But they don't know how to use those magical objects, and they start to wonder if these ancient legends are actually controlling the weather. I did not realize that this is actually the second book of a series, and so through most of the book I was just very confused about what was going on or how these people knew each other. And then I realized, oh, I'm jumping in in the middle of a story and no wonder none of this makes sense. Especially the friendship between the teenagers, the four friends, I was just like, why are these people friends? How did this friendship get started? They have nothing in common. But I guess it would probably make sense if you had read the first book where their friendship is forged you know, in the fires of adversity or something. The plot is very imaginative, but it's kind of chaotic. The story just roams all over the place and it is sort of repetitive. At different times, various of the characters go and meet the green man and receive a magical object. And then we do it again with the next character and they meet the green man and receive the magical object. And it's like, we just do the same scene with almost the same dialogue with the green man over and over and over. and. <laughs> It got a little boring. The characters are interesting, but they're a little one dimensional. They just kind of have that one personality trait and that's their thing and that's all there is. They are memorable, but there's just not a lot of depth to their personalities and I just didn't really connect with any of the characters. Overall, it is an enjoyable story and I liked it. I gave it three stars. I read The Blue Dragon's War, the first book in the Chronicles of Calibran. Belrog the Minotaur tells the young Younger Minotaurs, that's, why is that such a hard word to say? Um, he tells the younger Minotaurs the tale of Grom, a legendary warrior who fought the blue dragon in the Great War. So this is a story within a story. I liked this story pretty well. I mean, the world building is good and I liked learning about like the history of the Minotaur society. The characters are interesting, but they're just not very complex. They're not very deep. Like he's a warrior and that's what he does and that's kind of it. The plot does have some good scenes, but there's just not a lot going on. The story is just very straightforward. There's not a lot of like twists or turning points. There's kind of one big turning point and then that's just it. There is some profanity kind of oddly jumbled all into one chapter and there's no profanity anywhere else in the book. So I was like, why are we only swearing in this one chapter? <laughs> I don't know. I did like the few illustrations that they are. They're really cool and detailed. Overall, this was fine, but I kind of got bored with it and I gave it 2.5 stars. I also read The Leadership of C.S. Lewis, 10 Traits to Encourage Change and Growth. This is by Dr. Crystal Hurd and I loved it. I gave it five stars. I did a whole nother review video all about how much I loved this. So of course you can go over and watch that video to hear all my thoughts about the leadership of C.S. Lewis. I read The Pear Affair by Judith Eagle. Nell's horrible parents are going to Paris and Nell begs to be allowed to go with them because her former nanny, Pear, left years ago and now lives in Paris, but she stopped sending any letters about six months ago and Nell is worried that Pear may have disappeared. When Nell arrives in Paris, she discovers that the mystery goes far deeper than just a missing nanny. I loved this book so much. The plot is kind of a mixture of a lot of different mysteries that all blend together. And I really love the way the different characters' storylines overlapped and converged. There's a bellhop with a secret underground lair and a baker's son who worries that their bakery might go out of business. There is a poor young seamstress who dreams of going to school. And of course, Nell's evil parents are obviously up to something nefarious. Nell is such a wonderful character. Her personality is very powerful and complex. She is kind and sweet and bold and fierce and I I just loved her. She has great character development and like this internal struggle that she goes through. And all the supporting characters are amazing too. They're varied and memorable. It was really interesting to see how they all interact with Nell in different ways. And of course the setting in Paris is fantastique. 
The author really makes Paris come alive, describing the streets and the people and the architecture and the art and the food. Because Nell is fascinated with Paris, we get to see Paris through her eyes. I love the writing style, I love the story, I love the characters, I love it all. I gave it 4.5 stars. I also read all three books in the Zombert Chronicles. That is the rise of Zombert, the return of Zombert, and the revenge of Zombert. Melly finds a stray cat and she names him Bert. But he won't eat regular cat food and he prefers to hunt for himself. Sometimes he brings the dead carcasses of mice and frogs and squirrels to Melly's front doorstep. But in every case, he has bitten off his favorite part the head. And his strange behavior causes Melly's friends to wonder if maybe he's a zombie and he's eating the brains. And so they call him Zombert. However, Bert's unique abilities are a result of his time being experimented on at the Yumco Food Factory. Could the factory have experimented on animals and created a zombie cat? Even if he is a zombie cat, Melly loves him anyway. This trilogy was so fun and exciting. It has a mysterious plot and really funny scenes. Melly is a wonderful main character. She has a very weird family that was just so much fun to read about. I think this is the perfect trilogy for kids that are looking for something that's a little creepy, but not scary. Like even with the zombie stuff, it's never gross. It's never scary. It's just really hilarious. We do see some mild zombie action, but they don't eat brains. And Bert does like to hang out in a graveyard, but it's not too spooky or anything. Every book has gorgeous black and white illustrations that really bring the story to life and bring the comedy to the forefront. The funny thing is that in every book, there are a few shorter chapters that tell a little, just two or three pages from Bert's perspective. So most of the story is told in first person from Melly's perspective, but then the stories in Bert's perspective are told in third person. So I thought that was kind of a bold writing choice, I guess. I mean, it sort of works, but um, I felt like it kind of broke up the narrative flow a little bit. So mm. this trilogy really is hilarious though. I was just laughing and giggling and it's just plain fun. I gave every book four stars. I also read the second book in the Loki series, A Bad God's Guide to Taking the Blame. Loki has been banished from Asgard and Odin has cursed him with the body of a seventh grade boy. And he has sent Thor and Heimdall and Hyrokin, also in the form of humans, to look after Loki. And Loki is supposed to learn to be a better person. In this second book in the series, Loki is trying to make some new friends, but of course he goes about it in all the wrong ways. This is a really funny series. I like the kind of comic cartoon illustrations on every page. The narrative is told from Loki's perspective as he is writing in his magic diary about all his attempts to be good. And the characters of Thor and Heimdall are all really hilarious. They're trying to pretend like they're a normal human family, but they are having some trouble adjusting to human life. I liked that although Loki is selfish and mean a lot of the time, he really is trying in his own twisted way to do some good. He's a very complex character. <laughs> I gave this book four stars. And those are the books that I read in November. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know what is your favorite book that you have read recently or what is a book that really disappointed you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.